guilt and pride Blood of Christ the crucified From your hands, your feet, your side Jesus, I trust in you Because the wording is so different from Old English to New English, the letters are even different. Right. Yeah. Um, a good bit of it was changing it to modern English, and the rest of it was just errors. In fact, like I said, they they decided they were errors two years after they put the first publication out, they took it back and did it again. That's why. Right. And there were 400 major errors that they changed. Some of them were just plain old silly errors. How could they be inspired of God? If what was written was inspired of God, there couldn't be any punctuation errors or any other errors in there, right? And the proof is they didn't have the inspiration of God. They were just doing the best of what they had, and most of them, like I said, I'm guaranteeing it, were lost people. Just like King James, a lost man, just a lost man. They needed God, full of perversion. Something else there? Yes. Uh, why do some of the other writings seem to fit with the Bible and answer so many of the unanswered questions that the Bible raises? Uh, I didn't want you that question. <laughs> the Bible says the things that are revealed are for us. Don't go looking for deeper truths somewhere besides the Bible. You will get deceived. The things that are revealed have been given to us. Okay. God put in the Bible what he wanted you to have. Okay. Uh, believe me, you can study that book all of your life and get more and more and more revelation every time you look. But when people want to look for outside revelation is where they get deceived. And there are many people out there who have held as inspired an apocryphal book and received a doctrine that was just dead wrong. Okay? So don't trust yourself to be able to figure that out. Pick up something that you already know is the Word of God and ask God to lead you through that. I'm just warning you because I've run across these people for years and years. They've got all kinds of delusions and they got them from apocryphal books. You don't know what you're getting there. I don't trust myself to be able to figure out right from wrong when I read those things. So I just, I mean, I've read them, but I don't spend any time in them anymore. I haven't in years and years. There's moral teaching like in the Shepherd of Hermes. It's just moral teaching. You know that morality is morality. It's true, you know. But uh, as far as doctrines, I don't get. I don't want to get my doctrines from anything but the inspired Word of God. It's the only place I want to get them. I don't trust myself. We shouldn't lean upon our own understanding. We should lean upon God. And... Uh, that's why he gave us a book that really couldn't be added to or taken away from. Do you think the kings from the east used mathematics along with the star to go visit the baby Jesus? Interesting question. They used what now? Mathematics. The kings from the east, did they use mathematics along with a star to go visit the baby Jesus? They were magi. They were star prophets. They, um, they were astronomers. They saw his coming in the stars, there's no doubt in my mind. You know that the gospel is preached in the stars. And I'm not talking about astrology, that's a, a, a false cult science, you know, but, but astronomy, the, the gospel is preached in the stars. The man child, the woman, the circuit that they go through, it's all up there, folks. Um, it used to be, in fact, it's preached in the Bible. I mean, it's uh, it's preached in uh, in uh, in Job. You know, the the circuit of the stars is preached there. The zodiac is preached there. You know, the uh, God evidently uh, believed in it enough that he, he spoke about it in the Book of Job and in other places. And I believe in it too. 
I don't believe in astrology, but I do believe that the stars preach the gospel, and that God gave that revelation to men. And, you know, he says, you know, there's a, a book by uh, Sice called The Gospel of the Stars. Many people have written books about this, and some of them are very interesting, have a lot of good revelation in them. And he says, Canst thou find the cluster of the Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou uh, lead forth the Maseroth in their season, which is the signs of the zodiac in their season? Or canst thou guide the bear with their train? These are all zodiac signs, right? Uh, knowest thou the ordinances of the heavens? Ordinances of the heavens. Canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth? Is there a dominion in the earth? Yes, because the gospel's in the stars. Prophecy is in the stars. So the whole story is up there. That's in the, this is Job 38, verse 31 through 33 that I'm reading, just as a, to make the point that God did write it up there, just like he wrote it in the Bible. And I'm not saying everybody can interpret it, <laughs> just like everybody can interpret the Bible, but but it's still up there. They had a base system of six. The ancient Hebrews had a base 60 mathematical system. It's not like what we have now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the calculations they got were only for what they were doing. I mean, they, they didn't have anything like calculus, or, but they had the Lord to move them and guide them where other cultures did. Well, I think the Magi saw the coming of the man-child of the stars, and that's what they came looking for. Uh, yes. Okay, we're starting to get a little bit more questions here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Something about mathematics of Daniel 9. Uh, then Tim asked, I said something. They knew Daniel 9 and were possibly king from exile Babylon. It had something to do with the questions we were just asking, which was about the kings from the east using mathematics. Uh, they said, I believe there were more Jews of Babylon area than in Israel. Well, I don't know that the Magi were using Daniel 9. I mean, maybe you know something I don't know there, but I don't know that they were. It seems to me that they were using stars. Well, Herod seemed to think that they knew more about it than anyone else, because he asked them, when, when is the sign? That's right. But, uh, okay. uh, but, but I do agree with you that um, Daniel did give an accurate accounting at the end of the 69 weeks, you know, when the Messiah was going to come. They just didn't know it. They weren't figuring it. Now, the people in Jesus' day, the, the, the scribes and the elders, they, they knew it was the time of his coming. Yeah. And they may have known it from that. But they didn't know the sign. Huh? They didn't know the sign to look for. Right. They weren't they weren't reading it in the stars. That was a magi's particular gift, you know. Mm -hmm. So what else you yeah? have? Uh, about Mark nine and twenty nine, fasting is added in some manuscripts but not Right. And That's exactly right. Is that referring to the turn out? That's referring to, I think that's when the disciples couldn't cast out a demon. And you said this kind comes out on a prayer and fasting. This kind comes not out, but by, but saved by prayer. And there's no, there is no fasting. In fact, it says many ancient authorities add and fasting. Okay. okay. But there's no numeric pattern. In it. It's not in the numerics. It, just, just the fasting. There is fasting. Just the fasting is not in the numerics. Not in okay. Mark, but in the in Matthew, it, in Matthew it lists fasting and prayer. And if I'm not mistaken, Nestle's text doesn't yeah. have fasting in there either. What the Mark? What was it? Which is the three most ancient uh, It's not in there. And, and I do think that because of these two, that he was talking about the unbelief that needed to come out of it. Yeah, it was fasting or what? Uh, that, that it was unbelief that really needed to come out of it. Right. The spirit of unbelief. Yeah, their their unbelief. He said that they couldn't cast it out because of unbelief. Right. Mm -hmm. And fasting could be not just food, but by their actions, fasting of their actions, or their unbelief. Mm -hmm. To starve it out. 
Yeah. See, there's uh, there's places where words are left out, words are added in. The nurse is very clear though. That's what right. belongs and what doesn't belong. Where? Where is it in Matthew 17? I thought it was in verse 20. It's just the same story, but it doesn't it doesn't quote the same word. Maybe it was Luke. No, it's just in Matthew because I've just the last three days I've read the whole thing. Nineteen and twenty? Yeah. Okay, you're saying 17. Why can we not mm-hmm. cast it out? It's it's, them because of your little faith. Chapter 17. 19. Chapter 17? Yeah. Chapter 17. Let me go back there. Verse 19. Then came the disciples of Jesus and said, Why could we not cast it out? And he said unto them, Because of your little faith. Mm-hmm. Verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this man, You need none place, and you shall removed. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing. So in other words, if you, if you have faith, nothing's impossible. But but prayer and fasting was added. Now, does, does that say that Jesus didn't believe in fasting? No, he believed in fasting. Because he said, when you fast. <laughs> mm-hmm. When you fast. Not if, but when you fast. Don't be like the Pharisees. You know? So, he believed in fasting. And I do too. It's very, it's very beneficial. It's very powerful. It, it uh, really weakens your flesh, but of course that's good for your spirit. Anytime your flesh is weak, your spirit's strong. You know? And uh, it, it really gives you a better connection with God. You can hear God better. It's, uh, your flesh uh, wars against you. you know? Not feeding the flesh is a very spiritual thing. <laughs> Oh, uh, Trish was asking, why did they add fasting in Mark 9, 29? Somebody should have. I don't know, but we do know it was added. Uh, it's not in my Bible, by the way, and because they didn't consider it biblical, and it's not in the numeric either. And um, I think it may not even be in the Nestle's text. In fact, it's possible it's not even in the received text. I have both there. No, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised if you just got a receive text. You'd be correcting this King James all day long because the receive text is more accurate than King James is. Isn't that the one they use? That's no, no. the one they claim. But it corrects the King James all day long. So the King James is called the authorized version, but it's, they claim it's based off the receive text. That's what they claim. Because he finally makes his way back there through many other Bibles. Okay, prayer and fasting is in the received text in Mark 9 and 29. There's no numeric pattern in it, but it's in the received text. And the reason I looked that up is because sometimes the received text is right on, and the King James Version is just wrong. And, um, let me see what it says in the Nestle's text. This kind can come out by nothing save by prayer. The numeric pattern. And it said to them, this kind can come out by nothing save by prayer. So, is he he's saying unbelief comes out by prayer? Okay, here's the Nestle's text, and it has by prayer and no fasting in it. Uh, the Nestle's text is the, the three most ancient manuscripts. And it don't it doesn't have uh, fasting. So it was added in sometime after the ancient manuscripts. And um, it was added into the received text. The received text is, is not a good manuscript. However, it's better than the King James because it does correct the King James quite a few times. In fact, um, I've seen many times where my Bible was in agreement with the received text and the King James was wrong. It's happened, it's happened many times. Many times. And you, let me, by the way, let me tell you, you can get a received text um, in an interlinear Greek-English New Testament by Zondervan. You can get the received text. You can get the Nestle's text, which is a lot better. And it's the Zondervan, a parallel, New Testament, and Greek and English. Okay, Harold? Um, oh, this is, this is a 
The Zondervan parallel New Testament in Greek and English. That is the Nestle's text. That's the ancient manuscripts, the text that came from the ancient manuscripts. You can get one better than this by getting Ivan Pan's numeric Greek New Testament. Yeah, he has one that shows the Greek and the English. No, he has a Greek and he has an English. Okay. Wow. You got two books. You think you got two books? Two books. Uh, I've got both of those. Becky was saying that the NASB says Matthew seventeen twenty one, probably not in the original. Hmm. I was just looking in the numerics. There is no verse twenty one in yeah. Matthew seventeen. There's not. Uh, there's not, not in the original. Mine's not in the original. Mine's got twenty three and twenty four, but not in verse twenty one. It doesn't go from yes, 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 of course, King James would say, well, now wait a minute, you, you took a whole verse out of your Bible. Right. No, <laughs> you add the whole verse <laughs> into yours. Right. <laughs> they don't understand that one. No. No, it can't it. Yeah. Because, but that's exactly what happened. It was added in. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, let me tell you, that um, there was a war made on the Bible. There was uh, Bibles that were burned, many Bibles that were burned. And sometimes... They would copy a piece out of another gospel and put it in there because that part had been destroyed. See? There were ways, there were reasons why things got added in and things got taken out. But but God fixed it so we could always go back to the original. That's the neat thing. Do you have another question, Jim? Uh, I have one. Oh, uh, Michael just let me know that uh, abooks.com and Kriegel have the book at Astounding New Discoveries. Kriegel does? Kriegel has it. Good. I think that's in your Science Proof of Bible. You have so many links in there. <laughs> yes. So, Can that make a difference when we... Oh, uh, here's a question. Can that make a difference when in, we pray? Could fasting here be work? Could fasting what? Well, if you're using fasting to try to twist God's arm, yeah, it could be works. But if you're using it to put your flesh down so that you can hear God better, so that you can have better communication with God, that's good. And uh, you know, I wouldn't suggest you try and see God said you're not gonna be heard for your much speaking. There are people that pray, 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 and they think they're gonna change God's mind. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's not. But it's not the much speaking. Jesus said you're not going to be heard. Jesus said you're not going to be heard for your much speaking. People think they're going to wear God down. You'll finally say yes. But but the thing is, you're praying until God gives you a gift of faith so you can stand. There's a difference. A lot of a lot of praying is works, and sometimes fasting is works because you're trying to earn something from God. And he don't think you, you're worthy enough to be able to buy anything from him, frankly. He wants to give it by grace through your faith. You know what fasting's good for? It's good to put the flesh down so you can have faith. It's not good to twist God's arm with it because you're not going to do that. You're not going to convince him that way. See? So it could be. It's the attitude of, I think it's the attitude of the person that's doing it. What is their attitude? Why are you doing this? What's your? Why do you fast? I, I, from personal experience, fasting is powerful because the flesh gets weaker, and as the flesh gets weaker, the spirit gets stronger. And uh, I, I, I noticed that after like about three days of fasting, my senses are sharpened, and my mind uh, seems to even function better. And uh, the flesh is, of course, very weak, but that's what's been getting in your way anyway, right? So, but. But I don't recommend doing it to try to convince God. And, uh, you know, first of all, you're standing on the Word. That's what's going to convince God, right? Something just came to my mind. Something that Kurt and I were talking about earlier while we were just talking. And, um, and it goes back to something we were talking about earlier. That um, 
gifts to our children or our husbands give gifts to their wives just because or because they asked for it or you know not because they deserve it or anything else but just because or maybe just because they asked and we give a gift to them I was thinking about how much you know that made me feel good when I was able to provide for my children and I was thinking you know if I got that much joy out of doing for my children what did, well, how much joy does God give? God gives joy to give us what we need. But, right. but He has a covenant to give that to believers. And God desires to meet all of our needs. My God shall supply your every need according to His riches and glory. He gives joy out of doing that. But He does it for believers. He wants to make sure it's His children. What, what Christians don't understand is the thing that makes us His child and the thing that makes us justified and holy and righteous before him is our faith. So he does these things for believers. He makes the condition upon believing, you see. So um, we can't get God to break his word. Christians want God to break his own word in order to give them something. But he says, but the gospel is the power of God to save the one that believes. And God can't break his word. He, see, this covenant that we have with God is by faith. We believe the promise, we get the benefit. Is it, do we have to convince God? No, because he already did it. You don't have to convince God. You don't have to waste any time to convince God. You just need to believe, right? right. So God is joyful to give us all of our needs when we act like a believer. <laughs> God, we love you. God, we praise you. We give thanks unto you, Lord. Lord, um, I just pray, Lord, that you uh, help everybody to understand this revelation about numerics. And, Lord, we know it's not a, it shouldn't be a contest of our fellowship that we have to agree over such things. Because you taught us that that's not true. And uh, Lord, I love all our brothers and sisters out there, even if they use the King James Version. <laughs> because it really, that is not, this, we don't want to strain out and ask to swallow camels. We, uh, Lord, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters, and they don't have to agree with me. And I don't have to agree with them. But we do have to stay in the unity of the Spirit. We have to love one another. And we have to not be sectarian over foolish things. So, so Lord, I ask you, Lord, to give me forgiveness in all their hearts and understanding. And I pray, Lord, that you will guide them to search these things out and to find out that all sectarian doctrines that divide the body come from the devil, every last one. And, uh, Lord, your body uses all kinds of Bibles. And, uh, you can use all those Bibles on them, even. And you can guide them to more and more accurate Bibles. That's all in your hands. And we're not to judge one another over such things. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we can have peace, we can have love, and we can accept your great, wonderful gifts to us. And we can grow at the, at the rate in which we are capable. And at the rate in which you give us grace to. And so, Lord, go with my brothers and sisters today. And please bless them. Please guide them to all your truth. Please open my eyes, Lord. I want to know truth. I need to understand. If in any way I'm departing from your, your truth and your knowledge, please help me to understand. Please open my eyes. I trust in you, Lord. And I trust in you, for my brothers and sisters, too, Lord. So, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Please use us this week, Lord. Please manifest your Son in us. And let him speak in us, and him live in us, and his life be through us to the world. And, Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks.
Go with God. Can quench my thirsting soul. Purest water made me whole. Let your streams of mercy flow. Oh, Jesus, I trust in you. Though the mountains fall into the sea, though the rivers rise, I still believe. For your mercy stands and your word. 